today I'm going to show you how to make a MIDI keyboard from a computer keyboard. We're going to talk about actuation distance, key switch types, USB latency, and why you might want to use this sort of keyboard instead of a traditional MIDI keyboard. So first up, I'll explain what it is. In case it wasn't obvious, I just brought two keyboards and swapped the keycaps over. Okay, so I guess that's everything, I'll see you later. But actually there's a little more to it than that, so I'll get into the details in a moment. I arranged the keycaps to give me a visual indication of where the virtual keyboard is. It can be hard to memorise where all the notes are without a visual guide, so with the black notes emphasised, I can see where the notes are. This works in programs like Renoise and Ableton, and I've also got a patch built for it in Pure Data. Most digital audio workstations have a virtual keyboard of some type, but you'll need to look at your own music software to see where these keys line up, since some are different to others. For example, Ableton has a single row for the keyboard in the middle, whereas Renoise gives you two keyboards across two rows. The advantage of using a regular keyboard instead of a dedicated MIDI keyboard is that you don't need to sacrifice desk space for an extra keyboard. You don't need to mess around with MIDI drivers, you just need to load up the software and it's ready to go. Before you go keyboard shopping, you need to consider a few different technical points. I'm going to give four examples for how you might want to use the keyboard, and each one has important factors to consider. So here are the four examples. One is importing notes into a sequencer. Two is playing monophonic synth lines. Three is playing chords. And four is playing drum pads. So let's get into the technical points. The first technical point is key rollover. The key rollover of a keyboard is a measure of how many keys you can press at the same time. Most cheap USB keyboards have a low key rollover, which means that if you try to play particular chords, you'll find that certain combinations just won't work. If you want to check your own keyboard, I've put a link in the description that leads to a tool that can test your key rollover. Try playing some chords and you'll probably see what I mean. Now this is only an important thing to consider if you're going to be playing chords. If you're happy to play monophonic synth lines or to build up chords one note at a time, this may not be a problem. Once you get into the realm of buying mechanical keyboards, you'll start to find information regarding the key rollover capabilities listed in the specifications, but usually you won't see it for cheap keyboards. The next consideration is actuation distance. Keyboards are not meant to be used for fast rhythmic purposes. They're usually designed to have a pleasant cushiony touch, so there is often a significant amount of travel between the top of the key press and when the key actuates. And to complicate things even further, many keyboards don't have any tactile indication of when a key press has activated, making fine rhythmic playing at high speed difficult to impossible. There are two ways to get around this. The first is to get a mechanical keyboard with a tactile actuation switch so that you can both feel and hear when the keyboard has actuated. And the second is to get a keyboard with the smallest amount of travel possible. Some of the very cheap membrane keyboards work a lot better in this respect than the more expensive mechanical keyboards since they have a shallower travel distance. But this isn't always the case, so you should ideally check the keyboard in person before purchasing if you have that option. The next consideration is latency. Keyboards connected to a USB port have a minimum latency of 6 milliseconds. This is already true with USB MIDI controllers, it's true for your sound card, and it's true for everything that uses the USB protocol. So you'll be dealing with a minimum of 12 milliseconds of latency between a key press to when you first start hearing the sound. And this is before you even start factoring in audio buffer latency, which can be between 4 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds, depending on your settings. Something to be aware of is that if you buy a wireless keyboard, the latency can often increase significantly. I've typically found that 10 to 20 milliseconds of audio latency is fine for playing live synth notes, but that 6 milliseconds is absolutely necessary for playing live drums. So going back to my previous examples, if you're putting notes into a sequencer, then any keyboard will do. If you're playing monophonic synth lines, you just need a quick actuation distance, if you're playing chords, you need good key rollover. And if you're drumming, you need all of the above plus extra low latency audio. The final consideration is keycaps. When I made my keyboard, I brought two of the same keyboard and swapped the black and white keys over. But if you buy a mechanical keyboard, you can often buy different colored keycaps separately and save the money that you would have spent buying a second keyboard. 
You could also use stickers to indicate where the black keys are instead of swapping over keycaps, or you could just memorize where all the keys are and in the process make this entire video completely redundant. So I hope you've been able to get some useful information from this video and that I've inspired you to make your own MIDI computer keyboard keyboard. That's everything I wanted to say for today, so thanks for watching.